Check out Grandma's 90s laminate countertop. Now common wisdom says, Oh, granite, well, you, if you're gonna do the counters, you might as well replace it with granite. Me though, I'm on a budget. Perhaps even a $40 budget. And additionally, I skipped granite lifting day at the gym, so there will be no hoisting of 300 pound granite slabs for me today. Instead, I'm gonna paint it. It makes me a little nervous, because after all, how well can paint stand up to everyday kitchen abuse? I'ma find out today. As a side note, for me, I had to remove my cooktop because I was not only going to replace it, but I also wanted to get the paint underneath the cooktop. So here's a few moments of me removing said cooktop. I kill the breaker, I remove the cable from the cooktop. It wasn't really screwed in or nailed in or anything like that, so I just removed it. And then I correspondingly installed a new one. Now then, before starting the paint huffing party, a few very, very strong considerations to uh, consider. It takes three days to dry, rendering your kitchen useless. Make sure food is prepared for the week, or be ready to consume copious amounts of Dunkin' Donuts brand cement mixed bagels. We actually set up a toaster oven in the dining room, and subsisted on Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches. Not too great, not too awful, 100% guaranteed constipation. And also, the fumes are very strong, so use plastic covers like I did to tape off the room if you plan on being in the house. Ventilate as much as you can, open some windows, and wear a NIOSH rated canister mask unless you want your remaining brain cells to commit suicide. Oh, so you think this mask will protect you from the fumes? So first up, we're gonna do some surface prep. Clean it, but not too well, then sand. And because my IQ was 600, I forgot that I used my orbital sander on the drywall the day before. For sanding, 2 to 300 grit will do. After you're done sanding, give it a very thorough cleaning with a degreaser. Because any surface with bad prep will lead to paint not sticking, and you definitely don't want to be doing this project again. Once everything is nicely prepared and the kitchen is quarantined for the rest of the house, you paint. Here's the paint I used, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. I personally used a short nap cabinet roller, but in retrospect, I think I would have liked to use a foam roller instead. Because the nap started shedding like a cat in summer, and it's not fun trying to fish all that stuff out of wet paint. I believe the instructions said 45 minutes between coats, and I wound up applying three coats, or basically the whole can. So like I mentioned before, this stuff takes three days to dry, but from what I experienced, the longer it dries, the harder it gets, so maybe beneficial to extend that beyond the three days. Now let's check out those counters, don't they look fantastic? I love me a good and cheap result. Now in some spots the paint actually filled gaps in the laminate, and it made the countertop look like one solid piece. It really gives this kitchen a clean modern look. Now the next question is, how does this stand up to abuse? Because a kitchen is a high traffic area, you got utensils, you got knives, forks, you're cutting stuff on the countertop. It's, there's no point to doing this if it doesn't wear well. So here's me giving my final impressions. Well now, I shot that video about three months ago, so now it's time to take a look at what it looks like now. I didn't really prepare for this, so I didn't clean anything off, but let's have a look here. Overall, I would say it has stood up pretty well to the abuse. Here's some spots that I was talking about that was happening with the nap. The nap would kind of shed itself and embed into the paint, and that's that's the result. So not 100% perfect, but again, standing up pretty well to abuse. It, it's not really chipping, it's not really cracking. Here we have a few spots, not too terrible. It's a portion of the countertop which is dirty, so let me show you what it's like to clean. So we got coffee stains, we got gunga, we got breadcrumbs, just a wet paper towel. Looks like I'm gonna need a little more than a paper towel for this one. How about a wet wipe? Now we're talking. Nice. Here's what I was talking about with the seam. It almost made it invisible. That's very nice. From a distance, you can't even tell it's there. Let's see, can I be in the same shot with the counter? Okay. So, 
for forty dollars, not too bad a way to spruce up the kitchen. Would I prefer stone and all that? Sure, but like I said, I haven't lifted enough to be able to lift granite slabs onto the counter just yet, so I'm not ready. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time we will wrap up this kitchen remodeling series with a conclusion video, and then move on to some other projects. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. Yeah! <laughs>